Our webinar today is going to be focusing on taking a database and getting it ready to flip it to a different format or maybe you've got a new channel completely that you want to put on the air. How can you do that super fast? Well, Aaron Taylor is here to give you all of the insights into that. Aaron? Thank you, Jill, and welcome to everyone that's joined us for the webinar today. As Jill mentioned, this is the down and dirty simple way to build a database from scratch or to repurpose a database that you already have existing in your stable of databases. We call it zero to database in 60 minutes or less. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we can do everything, you know, potentially that you'd want to do to uh, set up a new radio station and put it on the air in 60 minutes, but very much of the bulk of the, the prep work that's involved here we can do within the time of this broadcast. And we'll actually go through two different scenarios during the broadcast today. We'll talk about the two different paths that you might consider when you're talking about either building a database completely from scratch or for repurposing a database for some other process. Now, a lot of times we will get phone calls here as music scheduling consultants asking how we do this in a really quick manner because you know, maybe a uh, program director has found out on a uh, Thursday afternoon that they're flipping formats on Friday or they're flipping formats on a holiday weekend. Perhaps they've just found out that they're about to uh, take another station into their stable and they're going to be programming a format that uh, they hadn't previously programmed. Or they're going to build a database for their streaming online or their HD channel. Perhaps you just want to learn more about Music Master Windows and you want to build a database completely from scratch. Or you want to take your existing database and do what you will with it to try to learn more about the program. Maybe test out some rotational theories. Or, like I said, maybe you're thinking about making a formatic adjustment at some point and you want to use this as your formatic adjustment database while you use your existing real database uh, moving forward uh, at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and start off today with talking about the what we call the Keep It Simple database, the KISS database, which basically allows us to create a Music Master template database within the existing Music Master setup that we already have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into my Music Master database here and step through the process of creating a Keep It Simple database with you and then talk about the various setup and considerations that we'll need to uh, look at as we go through and build this database. So from our main menu, we're going to go to File and Open Data Set. So bring up our Data File Manager. You see I already have two existing stations in my Data File Manager. We'll, we'll spend some time in both of these as we go through the exercise today. But what I'm going to do now is step you through the process of creating a brand new Keep It Simple database. This is a completely empty database with a set template of Music Master fields that can be altered as we move forward, or we can just use that as our database as we move forward without any further alteration. Important to note, you can make as many of these databases as you wish at any time. Uh, obviously, if you have questions or need additional fields added to the list of fields that you'll see here in a moment, please contact your music scheduling consultant, and they'd be glad to help you uh, add fields to the database if, if that's what you feel like you need or uh, have uh, questions about some of the fields and what their usage is, we'd be glad to help you with that process. So next I'm going to go to click on New in the Data File Manager. And that is going to bring up automatically a template that asks us if we want to create a new Keep It Simple database. We're going to go ahead and click on Create. At this point, we can name rename the new data set words here with either our call letters, our station slogan, or test database, whatever we, whatever we want to put in there. We're going to go ahead and I'm just going to put in test.fm as an example. But again, you can put whatever you want in here, and we can name this something else later as we go along. But that's all we need to do here. Then click OK, and now we have test.fm, which is a completely empty new Music Master data set that we can do with what we like. So now we're going to go ahead and select it, click on Open. And we're going to start with doing some critical configuration points that I just want to make sure that we spend a little bit of time on and 
look at so that you realize that if you're going to do this at some point, that you'll want to make note to, before you get too far into this process, do these two very basic configuration processes before we move forward. First of all, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to define what we call the primary and secondary fields in the Music Master database. This drives the combined description field that you may have seen in many places in your existing databases. Uh, typically, you'll see the artist and title information in there. This also drives the search bar. And so it's, it's very important that we go through and tell this brand new Music Master data set what we intend the primary and secondary fields to be. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and click on Data Set, Library, and Fields. And while we're in this list, I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen now so that we can look at this. Again, keep in mind, as I said at the inset, that this is a template that we have designed taking all the hard work out for you, basically just giving you a database that, for most intents and purposes, you'll be able to take right off the bat and put in your artist title, intro, runtime, sound, tempo, gender, all the things that you typically would use, your automation number. We've built in some basic fields, so you can just take this and, and roll with it. But as I mentioned at the beginning as well, if you find, as you're looking at this list, that you need some additional testable fields, or some additional text field, a quick call or email to your music scheduling consultant, and a quick backup of the database at any point, we can help you add in additional fields or help you determine the best kind of fields for the purposes that you need beyond the fields that you see here. One thing that might be really um, good to do as well here while we're looking at this list is, again, make an inventory of the fields you have. Look at the source data that you're intending to work with to make sure that you're going to be able to fit in all of these fields. And then also while you're here, you may want to look at renaming some of the fields so that it's more clear to you and the people that are working in the database as to what these fields actually are. So as an example here, with field number 102, which is right now named as file name, I'm going to call this, just for more clarity's sake, maybe we'll go ahead and call this automation number because we, that's maybe what we've been used to, or that's maybe what we might have used in some you know, other previous program, perhaps. So we're going to call this automation number. And then we're also maybe going to go ahead and define the abbreviated version of this, too. And we'll just go ahead and call this auto number as an example. OK, so now let's talk about the primary and secondary fields. Typically, like I mentioned, it's artist and title. So we're going to go want to find those in the list here and go ahead and define those. So what we'll do is we'll identify those on the list. Let's start with title. We'll click on the box to bring the descriptive information for that field over on the right. And we're going to want to identify under identification the primary and secondary field boxes. So not completely critical which one you define, primary or secondary, artist or title, but but in most cases, we'd recommend you go ahead and set the secondary field for artist, the primary field for title. So we're going to go ahead and set that now to primary field yes, again, for title. Now we're going to go ahead and click on artist and set the secondary field to artist. Click yes, click OK, and that process is done. Now when we look at our search bar, if we look at our combined description field, as well as if we look at our song card bar, we'll see the artist and title information will be displayed in that field. So that's one thing to make note of to make sure that we do right at the start. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and set up our automatic purge function. Both of these functions are not set by default, so you'll want to go ahead and check that. You'll also maybe want to check these as well in your existing databases to make sure that they are in place. This is going to help greatly in keeping the size of the database at a manageable size. So we're going to go to Data Set, Schedule, and we're going to go to Purge History from there. And the box that we're going to want to focus on for this particular purpose is going to be under Settings and Automatically Purge History when necessary. This is not set by default. We're going to go ahead and click it, and then we're going to click OK, and we're set. Again, this is going to keep the database at a manageable form when we send backups to ourselves or send to other people in the station, or if we just make backups to archive on the network, 
it will keep that at a manageable size. So then next, we'll want to look at what sort of information that we have that we're about to be bringing into this brand new data set. Perhaps we have a safe list from our consultant. Perhaps we have a library list that we've just gotten from a content provider that we're going to want to work with. Perhaps we're running a library synchronization, uh, synchronization definition from our existing automation system that has our entire radio station universe of music that we're going to want to bring in. If you're thinking about using that last particular function, if you've got an automation system that you know that you can generate a list from, you may want to place a quick call or email to your music scheduling consultant and find out the process for getting library synchronization set up so that one of these lists can be run for your particular process. So that's, you know, that, those are the, the, the main ways that you're probably going to get this source data in. The one that I'm going to focus on today is going to be a list that I've generated from an automation system. And I have this right now on my taskbar in Excel. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up so that we can all see it. I don't have a full library universe here. I have about 50 songs, but I have all of the fields that would have been in my automation system that I could reference. I have my automation field. I have my automation category. I have my song runtime, my song title, and my song artist information. Now, obviously, your information may vary depending upon the source. But one of the, the very simplest ways to get data into Music Master from outside in another source is going to be simply to do a Windows copy and paste, either from Excel, like I'm working with here, or from a Word document or some other type of function. It works really well if you can take the information from a, from a, uh, a notepad document or a Word document into Excel so that we can break these into columns. And then in Music Master, set the columns up precisely in the same order and add precisely the same number of music cells so that we can, again, just copy and paste this data straight into our Music Master database. So that's you know, something to, to consider and think about when you're setting this up. And again, your music scheduling consultant can help you with this process if you're at all unclear of how to do this in, in uh, Windows, in Excel, or how to copy and paste data into Music Master. Simply what I'm going to go ahead and do here, I've got 50 cells of information here with uh, six columns, five columns of information. And I'm going to take this information, I'm going to scroll down the list here, and I'm just going to go ahead and simply hit Control-C on my keyboard, which is Windows Copy. And I'm going to go now into another database that I've already done a little bit of preparation for. This is my The New Format database. This is, for all intents and purposes, the same as the test FM database we just created. I've already done just a little bit of setup here. I've set up the primary secondary fields. And I've also gone ahead and done the purge process. In addition to, just to kind of speed things up a little bit here, set up 50 empty library cells that we can paste into here in just a moment. Biggest thing to, to bring up and to remind everyone of at this point is, again, we'll want to look at our Excel sheet and make sure that we know what fields of information we have to draw from. And then when we go into Music Master Windows, that we set up under Show Hide Fields the fields in exactly the same order so that we can copy and paste directly in without any sort of, any kind of uh, discrepancies anywhere. And then we'll want to, once we've set the fields the way that we want, we'll want to go ahead and add the same number of empty cells in to Music Master that we also have in our source data, our Excel sheet. So in this case, it would have been 50. I've already done that in the interest of time here to go ahead and add in 50 cells. But that's the process. I'm going to add these in, or I have added these in, as uncategorized at this point. Because we don't know what category we're going to put these songs in, perhaps. And then I've got this Windows data already on my clipboard. So I'm going to go ahead now and paste it into Music Master. It's going to be critical that I click in the upper left-hand cell here to go ahead and make sure that I get the data straight into the, the database. I'm going to hit Control. Z, which is Windows Paste. And it's going to go ahead now. And here is the exact information from Excel into Music Master. Really cool and a very fast way, like I said, to get the information in. 
a lot of times you'll have a lot more data to work with than just 50 cells. We realize that. And again, if it's daunting or you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to call your music scheduling consultant and ask them to help you with this process. This also might be a good point at this, at this particular juncture to look at the other fields that we might want to go ahead and code for that we didn't have source data for already. So in this case, say for example, we know we can very quickly go through here and add gender into this particular list of songs. And perhaps sound code, we'll be able to do that as well without too much trouble. Tempo perhaps, you might as well go ahead and just add those fields in to your default display at this point so that they are set and ready to go. And since we've already gone ahead and done that at this point, let's go ahead and let's talk about the next couple of steps after we've set a library default design. If we know what our categories are going to be for this brand new database, we can simply go ahead and set those up now. We can go to data set, library, categories, and we can go through and add a number of categories. I'm just going to add a, a couple of them here just so that we have a, a basis to work with. We're going to add the, the A, the hot category, the B, the second hot category, so on and so on. Obviously, your category names and the, the number of category names are completely up to you. And you can, as you know, make as many categories as you wish. So we'll just go ahead and put a couple of them in here. And so now we've created some categories. So now if we want to go ahead and make the next step of putting things in the library, we could also add another column. And let's go ahead and add category in, too, just to make it that much more clear. We'll add category into our default display. And we'll save that. So now what we can go ahead and do, if we know the songs that we've got here that we want to add into specific categories, we can start doing one of three different things to bring the songs into the category. We can either left click in the pointer column on the songs that we want to work with, drag and drop into the categories. We can go ahead and right click and move the songs that we want into the existing categories. And we can also go ahead and click in the category column here and add them into existing categories. So you'll want to do that, obviously, um, at some point, uh, either before you launch or as you you know, add that into your timeline. Maybe you're just going to work with one category to start because you just got to get it on the air. You could certainly go ahead and take all the songs here and move all the songs into the A category and just bring them into one specific category right from the start. We have one other song in, in another category. It looks like, nope, we have it in A. So everything now is in A. So now we've categorized everything. And again, obviously, we're stepping very fast towards you know, some of the things that we typically would do. We may want to go through and color our categories, you know, some other things here to uh, you know, kind of make this more defined. Um, but the, that's, you know, again, something that obviously you'll do um, when you get a, a few more minutes. Next thing we'll probably want to do is we'll want to define our attributes so that we can go through again and, and have the database make sense in the rule tree of what gender, sound, and tempo is. So we'll want to go through then and go to data set, library, attributes. And your Keep It Simple database template already, again, has your sound, your tempo, your gender already defined in here. So all you need to do is then go ahead and decide what codes are going to be important to you when you go ahead and code in the library. So we're just going to go ahead and I'll just put a, a basic one in there. You get the, the gist of what we do there. So defining the attributes. And uh, then you can go through and define the attributes once you've set those up. Um, a couple of simple ways to do that. Obviously, if you know you've got a whole list of, let's find a list of here. For example, this is probably not a good database for this. Uh, actually, it is. Let's go ahead and let's talk about uh, gender coding. It looks like for the most part in this list, with very few exceptions, we could go through and say that all the songs in this particular 50 song list are male gender or male group. So if we need to code really quickly, why don't we use our mass changer? We can right click into our gender column, go to mass changer, say that we're going to use the male code as the code that we want to uh, define for male. We may want to define it even further with groups and things like that. But let's just go ahead and slam in the M code for male all the way through this library. So we'll go through here. The mass changer will ask us first if that's truly what we want to do. We're going to say yes to all. And now we have gender coded all of our male artists. We can do the same thing with sound and tempo if we know what our codes are going to be. Or we can also go through, say for example here, 
uh, in, the, in the interest of uh, the sound code, say we want to code a bunch of these songs as very, very hard, maybe very hard metal as a sound code. Another neat trick that we can do here, we, we can define a particular code. We may have already done that in the sound code. We probably should have. But let's go ahead and say that we're going to use heavy metal, an H code for heavy metal in the database. So we're going to go ahead and use the uppercase H for that. Now another thing that we can do is, and it's just telling us there now that we have not defined our heavy metal code. We know that. Say we have a bunch of songs in here that we're going to code as heavy metal, all in a string. So we can do that very simply with using the Control and the D key on our keyboard now. So we've already defined the first Metallica song. We're going to define Enter Sandman and wherever I may, wherever I may, also with the heavy code. So we're going to hit the Control key, hold it, and D, which then codes down the list. And we could just continue to hold the control key in D if we wanted to add a bunch of these codes in. So again, along with Math Changer, this could be a very fast way to get some really quick coding done in the database um, and then move forward. So let's say that we've, we've finished with our attribute coding and now we want to talk about clocks. Let's go ahead then and let's build a clock and to talk about uh, all the, the fast ways that we can build clocks in the database. Next thing we're going to want to do here then is go to Format Clock Maintenance. Uh, certainly we can go ahead and click New and build a brand new clock, and we'll talk about some of the, the shortcuts here. Another really cool method of, of doing this might be as uh, taking a clock from an already existing database and slightly repurposing it. We can do that from our Format Clock Maintenance screen by clicking on the Import box. Now obviously if we're importing, we're going to have to uh, do something else first. We're going to have to export. So let's go ahead and let's go over to my other database first and look at the sending the clock out and then bringing the clock in. So we're going to go over to this Active Rock database, which already has uh, a couple of clocks in here. Maybe we want to repurpose one of those clocks into our new data set. So we're going into the Format Clock Maintenance list of our Active Rock database, and we're going to export the basic clock. So I'm going to go ahead and select the basic clock and I'm going to click Export. It's going to ask me where I want the clock to go. I'm going to just dump it right into my Music Master directory. I've already actually created one of these, as you can see, in the interest of time. But it's named as clocks.mmdx. That is in the format that Music Master will understand. That's the clock that I want to repurpose. So then once I've done that process and exported the clock, I can go to my new database, open it up again, go to Clocks, and then import that clock from my MMWin directory. That's the clock that I want, clocks.mmdx. Click Open. And it's now going to ask me if I want to assign this new clock code or if I want to override an existing clock with it. I'm just going to go ahead and assign a new unused clock code and click OK. And now it has brought the clock from my active rock database into my new database. Now obviously, it's got some interesting stuff in here that uh, we may not be currently using that we may need to, to change out. The category names, some of the category names we may not intend to use. Some of the non-music category names we may intend to have different names. But we have a real good basic starting point, if we wish, of using an, an existing clock from another database. So that can save you a huge amount of time, uh, especially in the particular instance where perhaps we're repurposing another database and um, we want to use existing clocks from another format into uh, a database that we're repurposing. So that's something, again, to, to keep in mind. Um, another real fast way when we're building a new clock, as an example, let's go ahead and just build a new clock, and we'll just call this the test clock. And we're going to just add in a bunch of fixed positions. We're going to use the A category as our example. We're going to start here with position number one. But say, for example, we don't want to go through and manually build in every one of these codes. You may or may not know about this, but you can certainly go up here to clone and click as many times as you feel like you're going to need slots for. Let's do about 15. So we just go ahead and then clone. And now we've got a bunch of fixed positions that we can work with, and we can change these out to whatever actual category they're going to be on our, our particular clock here. 
So that can be another really fast way to do things. Another thing that you might want to consider that you may not be aware of is you can actually also go and drag from the right to the left onto your grid here and highlight over and actually change positions on your clock grid this way. So you can drag from the pointer bar over to your category definition and change those over to existing categories as well. So that can be another really fast way to build a clock if you wish. So keep that in mind. Uh, so building clocks. Obviously, once we've built our clock or clocks, we're going to want to go ahead and set up our assignment grid. We'll create a brand new assignment grid here. Call that test. And we're going to just use maybe the one clock to start with, the B1 clock or the A clock. You may or may not know this as well. You can left click and drag across and down, and then type in the letter or number that corresponds to your clock in the first cell, hit Enter, and now we've populated the entire assignment grid with that clock. And we're going to want to go ahead and make that active. Now we have an active assignment grid. Now I understand and I, I realize I'm jumping you know, very fast through a lot of these procedures here. Obviously, some of these things you'll, you know, you'll already know how to do. Some of these things you may not do based upon your particular circumstance. Uh, again, your music scheduling consultant can go over you know, all, all of these particular processes in more depth if you have any questions. Uh, now that we've made an active assignment grid, we're going to want to go ahead probably and set up our, our schedule pass orders and our search steps. We're going to want to then go to data set schedule and schedule properties and set our pass orders as well as our search steps. Uh, you may or may not know that in the search depth column, if it's left blank, it's going to default to 50% of the, the category. So you may be OK with that for particular categories. You may want to make sure that you go through and set the percentages that you intend here uh, right from the start. So you'll want to go through and just uh, take a little bit of extra time looking at that uh, to make sure that you set the search depth as well as the pass orders. Uh, other things that we'll maybe want to look at now that we've set the uh, the, the assignment grid up, and we've set up the clocks the way we want on the grid. We may want to just switch over quickly to the turnover analysis. And I'll switch over to another database here to illustrate this a little bit better. But let's go to the Active Rock database where I've already got some things put in place here. And we'll look at turnover analysis here. So on our active grid that we just put in place, you may want to go look at turnover analysis very quickly, not only to see based strictly upon songs and slots at this point how the category or categories are going to rotate, but we also may want to look at format clock category usage at this point once we've built our brand new assignment grid to make sure that, as an example here, let me call up one of these later categories in the database here, that has some uneven clock calls. So for example, this late 90s category we're using in different places here. Some were using two an hour, some were using one an hour. If you didn't intend for it to be that way, then this is a really quick way to just double check your work to make sure that you're in fact evenly calling for the categories as you intended as you were building a clock. So you might want to just spend some time looking at that as well when you set that up. Since we brought in a brand new library at this point, this library is you know, from our, our content vendor, or they're, it's from uh, our automation system, and we've brought it in. We're going to want to make sure that before we start scheduling this, that we evenly distribute all the artists and titles evenly through the categories in the database. So we're going to want to go ahead and go to schedule order in our new database as well. So we're going to want to go to data set, schedule, and schedule order. And we're specifically then want to click on the red brackets here for the arrange category, which then is going to bring up category arrangement. Specifically, we'll recommend that you use the arrangement function and drop down to optimize by field. Select your categories. I'm going to go ahead and select all the categories at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and optimize by artist. So what we can do here then is as best as we can in these categories, distribute the artists evenly right from the start in these categories. So we don't have a, a bunch of the same artists all clumped together right off the bat when we schedule. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll optimize by field. 
And the other thing that, that would probably be good, um, specifically in a, in a database that we're repurposing, uh, if we've not set things, would be sort by rest. So if we're bringing songs, new songs into an existing database, you might also want to think about doing this from time to time so you can make sure that the most rested songs are getting the best consideration first as opposed to ones that have been in the existing library. Um, again, in this particular instance, really not applicable, but sort by rest is another really great function that you'll want to use when you're bringing new songs into uh, an existing library, specifically in this case. Uh, other things that we'll want to talk about here or think about at this point is we'll want to talk about uh, whether or not right from the start, and again, this is completely up to what your timeline is and you know, what you're tasked also with doing here, you may want to then also look at the other parameters that we'll typically want to put in place. Data set schedule, and then consider whether or not you're going to need to utilize gold recycling. Go ahead and set that up for your, your gold categories. Uh, perhaps auto platoon for the categories where you've got some syndicated programming, you want to maintain a precise rotation. Go ahead and set that up at this point. Auto platoon, uh, if that's something that's going to be important to you and you're working with a large universe of gold library and you want to shift a predefined number of records in and out on a timetable, go ahead and set that up as well at this point. We're going to go ahead and go into the rule tree here in just a moment. But uh, also, it's important probably to mention shift editor. We could also go ahead and define what our shifts are going to be um, before we go into the rule tree and actually use the shift rule as a, you know, a potential rule parameter. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up very quickly here the shift parameters. And again, this is completely up to you know, your particular scenario for shifts. You may you know, not even decide you want to implement this rule, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here now. And again, I'm dragging and dropping, typing in once into the box, and then enter, and then it's completely finished. So a really fast way, again, in Music Master Windows to, uh, to get that taken care of. So next, then, we'll probably want to go ahead and look at our rule tree. We're going to go ahead and click on the lightning bolt. And important to point out here with the rule tree, with um, the way that this is set up, and obviously we've done you know, lots of sessions and, and would be more than happy to spend time with you going over the ins and outs of the rule tree here. Important to note that um, when you set this up, one of the, the very important things, even if you're not going to go ahead and utilize it, um, is to go ahead and utilize it right from the start, I guess I should say, would be to bring gay party in as an, an all-category unbreakable rule. So when you go forward into actually gay parting songs, you'll already have that rule in place. Gay parting in Music Master Windows is not set by default. So if you intend to use it, or even if you don't, go ahead and put it in there so it's already set as an all-category unbreakable rule. Just a good thing to set up right off the bat. Um, attribute rules, sound code, tempo, gender. The Music Master rule tree is what we're going to look at here next, the rule tree wizard. And um, rule tree wizard is not going to be able to help us too much with attribute rules, but it will help us with the, the, the really big ones that we're going to probably want to focus right off the bat with when we start up a brand new database. It's going to help us with minimum rest. It's going to help us with artist separation. And it's going to give us some rotation rules. And in this particular database, obviously I'm not getting a whole lot of recommendations at this point, but the rule wizard is a huge help and tool to you when you just need to get some basic guidelines as to your keyword separations, what they should be, your minimum rest, what they should be for each category, and then hopefully some basic rotation rules that you can put into place. Obviously, at this point then, you'll want to go ahead and work into the rule tree here and decide what your sound code rules need to be, build some rule groups if applicable, uh, work with your music scheduling consultant to determine exactly what other kind of rules you need to put in place. But again, the rule wizard will help you with the basics when you set things up. So you know, you'll probably go back and spend some time and tweak this as you, as you move forward as well. But that, obviously, rule tree, very important, the heart of the software. Spend a little bit of time thinking about that. Something else that uh, is going to be really helpful as a tool to you right off the bat is going to be another wizard that uh, oftentimes people don't realize is there and uh, can be really helpful all the way along as you look at your library and your library evolves is going to be the keyword wizard. And to access that, it's going to be data set, library, and keywords. 
And we'll go drop down here to our artist keyword list. Here is the universe of keywords in our database. We're going to now go to Tools, and we're going to go to Separation Wizard. And I'm not going to recommend at this juncture that we do anything other than just leave the defaults. We're going to click Next all the way through, and then Finish. And at this point, the Keyword Separation Wizard has recommended 38 active keywords that uh, it wants us to look at. So we're going to go ahead and click Finish. And based on the default setting that has already been put in place by Music Master down here in the rule tree, it's already saying 55 minutes was what it recommends as a default for all artists in the library. Based on the preponderance of some of the other artists in the database, and again, this is going to come into play with you know, what are your core artists and what are your fringe artists. There's going to be some recommendations that are made here in the keyword separation wizard that kind of give you some hints as to whether or not you should adjust specifically for some of these artists upward or downward the default, uh, adjust from the default to a setting that is upwards or downwards from what that default is. So in this particular case, and again, this is you know, probably not reality, but for ACDC and Aerosmith, as an example, it's recommending 30 minutes separation. As this library gets more fully fleshed out and uh, more songs are in the library, these particular adjustments will probably be different. And obviously, you'll want to take some of these just into consideration based upon your, your particular competitive situation, the format uh, slant that you're working with, and then obviously your market sensibilities. But again, the separation wizard can be a huge tool right off the bat. So once we've done all this, probably the only other thing that I would mention that uh, you may want to do is you may want to spend some time going into your schedule editor, going into your library maintenance, and making sure that all the views that you have that you need to have are all set up the way that you want. So you would go into show hide fields and set those views up just the way that you need them to be. Um, after that, I would say go ahead and schedule a day. Go to your data set schedule, automatic scheduler, and uh, run a day and see what you get. Now, this is going to be one of those processes that you're going to have to go several times probably, unschedule and reschedule, to uh, get it exactly right. You may want to add some rules in, take some rules out. A couple of really helpful tools here that uh, I just want to touch on that you'll maybe want to consider right from the start in this that can be helpful in discerning you know, whether your database is on target for your goals or not is going to be clicking on the Options tab. And consider using manual assist. Manual assist is going to stop right at the point in the automatic scheduling process if the scheduler cannot find a record that meets your criteria and force you to go ahead and make a change. If you do that a, a bunch of different times the first day you schedule and you notice a pattern, that may be a real good key to that you need to change some of the rules that you have in place there. Um, so manual assist, just as a general tool as well, can be very helpful in discerning whether or not you've got rule issues, or give you a completely filled out log right along the way as you automatically schedule. Instead of going back in after the fact and filling unscheduled positions, you can fill them as you go. So a huge helpful tool. Another thing that I'll suggest that you make sure you turn on is the thinking process. That can be very helpful in determining what's going on in the database, and your music scheduling consultant can get way in deep with you on that. Um, recap report should probably be turned on as well. We'll, we'll go ahead and look at that here just uh, very quickly here in a second. Let's actually cancel this. Go to Data Set, Schedule, and Recap Report. This is going to be very helpful in giving you a, a breakdown of your breakable and unbreakable rules right from the end of your scheduling session and tell you whether or not some of the rules that you have in place are specifically having a hard time scheduling. And uh, you'll want to be specifically looking in the past percentage column here for very low percentages. And if you see very low percentages, that's going to be a key that maybe some of the rules that you have in place at this moment are a little bit too stringent for the database that you have to work with. So again, this is always accessible by going to Data Set Schedule Recap after the, after the fact. But as you saw, I set up in my automatic scheduler, the recap report is going to pop up after a scheduling session is finished. So that can be helpful to look at, at least at the starting point. So that's, that's one other helpful tool. And again, other tools just you know, moving forward when you schedule the first day, if you're not already aware of this, data set schedule quick view to go ahead and look to see how many unscheduled positions you have 
in a particular hour, so you can go back through and make adjustments to that category if you wish. Other things in the schedule editor that are, can be really helpful right off the bat to make sure that things are plotting perhaps correctly for you is to click on vicinity viewer, this again in the schedule editor, to look at how the records are actually laying out hour by hour. And you can change this window to X number of hours and other types of criteria if need be. So that's, that's again, some very helpful tools in kind of diagnosing what um, you know, is happening with this brand new database. One other further consideration, once you're happy with the automatic schedule, and the editing process, and you've got a great log, is going to be what you're going to use to export to your automation system, if applicable. So data set schedule, export, export to automation. This particular database right now does not have an automation interface. But we're going to go ahead and repurpose one of these from the Active Rock database that we worked with before. So we're going to go ahead and go into our directory. We're going to go into Export Design Editor. We're going to go to Active Rock, and we're going to go ahead and pull the design that we have from our old database into the new one. So all we're going to go ahead and do here is just open it up quickly. We're going to go ahead and export it out straight into our Music Master directory, and then we're going to go ahead and go right back into our brand new database. Actually, we're going to go right back into our Export Design Editor for our brand new database, open it up, brand new design, file, and import, and take the existing automation design straight into our new database. We may need to change some fields here, because every Music Master database can be custom and unique. So we'll want to just look at this and make sure that this matches the spec that we have for our automation system. And again, your music scheduling consultant can help you with that as well. So again, no need to reinvent the wheel on that. Just pull it out of another database and you're good to go. OK, so 43 minutes here I've spent basically, more or less, on building a brand new database from scratch. So as you see, a lot of things to, to cover there, but it's very doable within a short period of time to bring a new library in, build clocks, build some simple rules, schedule it, and perhaps unschedule and reschedule a couple of times, and get a very nice, workable starting database. As you find as you go along, if there are additional fields you need and other things that you need in your database, let your music scheduling consultant know, and they'll be more than happy to help you with that. Let's go through the process now, in the time remaining, of how to clone an existing database. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out my new format database, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with our Active Rock database, the one that we've looked at a couple of different times here. And we're going to clone that database. So I'm again going to the Data File Manager. I'm going to go to Active Rock and Open. Oh, I'm going to go to Open Data Set, and I'm going to go to Data File Manager, and I'm going to clone this database. So I'm going to go click on Clone. And I can rename this, whatever I wish to, new call letters, whatever, new Active Rock. And it's going to go ahead and take just a moment here. And now I have a exact duplicate of my other database. Now, the advantages to cloning the database from an existing template would be you've got a defined number of fields that maybe you've already worked with your music scheduling consultant on, and they're the way that you want. Maybe you want to repurpose some of these clocks. Maybe you want to repurpose the rules. You know, reality is maybe this is the fastest way to get a new format on the air, to just repurpose the database and copy and paste some songs into the existing data set make the old library inactive, whatever. So now we've renamed the clone data set. Other things we may want to do is we may want to go into Tools and Options and rename the actual name of the database at some point um, under Station Name, give that a different name, rename the Music Master data set file as well in our MMD directory. Um, but again, that's for a little bit later time once we get past our building the database crunch here might be a good idea before we start this to make a verifiable database backup so that we can roll this back to the beginning if we need to, if we get too far astray. And it might also be a good idea to do incremental backups as well. We're going to go ahead and assume that we're going to clear all the decks on this database. And I'm going to go through these steps very quickly here. And uh, again, 
If you have uh, you know, other questions about these, uh, certainly feel, your, feel free to uh, consult with your music scheduling consultant. But I want to just give you the, the basic areas of the software that you'll want to consider cleaning out if you're going to just set the deck straight on this particular database. Some of them you may want to do, some of them you may not. So we're going to go ahead and go to Data Set, Schedule, Purge History. What this is going to do is this is going to clear, we're going to click Clear All, all the play history, play counters, performance counters, everything that is specific to the history that's in this database at this point. We're going to go ahead and click Yes. It's going to give us a verification box that, yes, we really want to do this. And now all the active history has been cleared. So simple there. That's something to you know, obviously be very careful with when you do that. Make sure you've got a verifiable backup. So we've cleared that. Next thing we'll want to do is maybe talk about clearing the entire library. Again, maybe you're going to repurpose the library. But for this particular example, let's go ahead and just get rid of the entire library. So here's our 1,294 song universe. I'm going to go ahead and right click in my pointer column, delete, delete all songs. And it's going to confirm that I really want to do this. This action cannot be undone. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It'll take just a moment here to clear the entire library. You see the hourglass here. It's working. It's cleaning things up. The next thing that we're going to want to do once we've cleared the entire library is we're going to want to go ahead and talk about the other areas of the software that we may want to clean up. So we've cleaned the songs now. We're going to want to go ahead and maybe look at queries. Say we don't need this particular query anymore. We're going to click on the Query tab on the info bar and delete it. Maybe we want to leave the other ones. Again, just make sure that you clear any unused queries out. If you've got a whole bunch of those in there that are not going to be applicable to this database, go ahead and do that. Packets, even though we've deleted the library, it's important to note that you're still going to need to go to Data Set, Library, and Packets and delete existing packet information. There's still residue from that. So we're going to go ahead. It looks like I had an Allison Chains packet. I'm going to go ahead and unpack it and go ahead and delete the empty packet from the database. So now that is gone. So that's taken care of. So packets. Next step, and again, you can do this in any order that you remember, but try to you know, make basic notes as to what you need to make sure of to, to get rid of. Of clocks, if there's specific kind of clocks that we know we're not going to be needing anymore, any or all, go ahead and go into format clocks and go ahead and delete those clocks one by one. Obviously, that can be a little bit time-consuming process if you have a lot of them, but that's, again, you know, something that you can decide to do or not do in the interest of either saving time or if you're trying to repurpose those clocks. As we mentioned earlier, we can go ahead and repurpose the clocks from another database. We can go ahead and do that. Assignment grids, same thing. Go ahead and delete the assignment grids if, in fact, you're not going to reuse those. Data set, clocks, and log note text. Any existing automation commands, anything that you know you're not going to need anymore, you can go ahead and delete those. Either go ahead and purge the ones that aren't used now because they're probably not on any clocks. You can go ahead and do the purge all function or go ahead and delete them individually. Make sure you delete those log notes if, in fact, you intend to not utilize those again. Data set library attributes. If you intend to repurpose this coding, do a different thing in this new database, you might want to go through here and then just simply go down the list here, hit the delete key on your keyboard, delete all the power codes, they're gone. Same thing with sound, gender, whichever you need to do there. Um, we talked about queries. Um, any special reports that you know that you're not going to need anymore? Like, for example, this keyword report, not going to need that anymore. Go through and delete it. Clear the decks on that if, in fact, you know that you're not going to need it. Um, next into the rule tree. The fastest way to go ahead and do that is to not open the folders, click on each individual category designation, click on the red X, click Delete, go on down through each category, confirm the deletion, save your change, clear your rule tree. Tools and options, if there's any sort of special settings that you set for this database that you know that you set specifically for some purpose, you may want to go through here and remember what that is or change it. You may also want to work with your music scheduling consultant on that to talk about the particular ramifications of doing some of that. Um, other scheduling parameters, data set schedule. You might want to look at your gold recycling. If you've got gold recycling in place, you're going to want to go through and find 
where that gold recycling has been put in and go ahead and clear those out. Don't forget those. Also, don't forget anything that you've got also under this particular menu for auto platoon or auto burn. Clear all those settings out. Make sure that is all set from scratch. So then from this you know, next standpoint, then we kind of circle back to our new library exercise earlier where we're copying and pasting in perhaps a brand new library. Perhaps we're repurposing the library that we rested if we decided to not delete the entire library wholesale there. We're building new assignment grids. We may want to look at our turnover analysis. We may want to then do some you know, new attribute coding for this particular database. Gold recycling, talking about you know, looking at putting that in place. Platooning, auto burn if that's applicable. Building new categories, putting those in place. And then pass order, so data set schedule, schedule properties, doing our pass orders, doing our search depths. And then the rule tree, building any kind of new reports, any kind of new displays, and giving it a scheduling spin. Scheduling it out, looking at the vicinity viewer, looking at the recap report, looking at the, all of the rules that we have in place to see if, in fact, we're on target and uh, basically doing some spit and polish, unscheduling and rescheduling. Export design, if we're taking a new export design in, go ahead and do the process that we just looked at here earlier, importing and exporting, and, um, or making modifications if we're also getting a brand new automation system. Work with your music scheduling consultant on that. So again, wrapping things up here, we're here to help you with any of the concerns or questions that you have. Kind of amazing that we can do all of this in 60 minutes or less. And uh, again, if you find yourself on a Friday afternoon having to flip a format, give us a call. We'd be more than happy to take the challenge on with you, do a go to meeting with you, help you through the scenario, work with the data that you have, and give you a you know, a, a great new start with a brand new database. With that, I want to hand things back over to Jill Sorensen. Thank you for your attention and time, and look forward to talking with you soon. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. You're, you're, thank you, Aaron. Uh, it, it's nice to know that you can uh, very quickly take care of some things that may uh, throw you a curveball normally uh, in your regular work day. So uh, definitely a webinar that you may end up coming back to again and again as you uh, add new channels and new databases to your system. Coming up next week, we are going to take a in-depth look at the rule tree. Uh, you know, all those fascinating uh, settings that are, are in those rules. So that's what's coming next week. If you have any suggestions, ideas for a possible webinar topic, drop us a line at support at mmwin.com. We'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you again for watching. And if you do have any questions, please contact us at support at mmwin.com or your music scheduling consultant directly. Thank you, and have a great day.